Here's how I apply custom camera profiles with a Calibrate Color Checker Target in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, why do I do this? Well, to make the colors and contrast correct every time I import new images so that when I edit my photos, I know that my workflow includes a reliable, repeatable, neutral starting point. Then I can confidently get creative with my edits. This process saves me significant time fussing around with subtle corrections that Adobe makes for you with their provided camera profiles. Here's the quick breakdown. Photograph a color checker in RAW. Import it into Lightroom Classic. Select that image and export via the Color Checker software plugin. Restart Lightroom Classic. Locate and apply the custom camera profile. Apply a custom white balance using the picker on the second lightest square. Copy and paste these settings to any photo or create a preset to save time in the future. You can also apply this preset upon import. Now, just edit creatively to taste and repeat this every time you import. That's it. The positive results are clear to me. It's an essential part of my everyday workflow and I hope it becomes part of yours too. Let's break it down step by step. Use the chapters below to jump to different steps quickly. You'll need any size of the Color Checker 24 patch charts. Nano, Mini, Passport, Classic, XL, or Mega. Make sure you're photographing the Color Checker Classic target. It looks like this right here. If you're in the studio or have extra room in your bag, you can get superior results using the 140 patch Color Checker SG chart. Throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to demonstrate using the 24 patch targets because it's what I use all the time and I love the results. First, get a well exposed and evenly lit raw capture that includes the Color Checker Classic target. It's convenient to also include the white balance card too, but it's not necessary. The end result should be in focus, evenly lit images where the Color Checker Classic panel fills the frame about 30% or more. The larger the percentage, the better the profile. Avoid casting shadows on the color patches as this may affect the software's ability to create a custom camera profile, which can be really frustrating. Also make sure the words on the color checker are right side up, the color checker is horizontal if possible, and avoid any other grid patterns in the background. I do this under direct midday sunlight or on a cloudless day. I set my camera to 5600 Kelvin or whatever Kelvin value is closest to that. Yes, you can change your white balance later, but why not start with good habits? Also, it makes everything look right as you capture it and therefore is much less distracting during your photo session. You may also use a custom white balance or a preset white balance. The exception is auto white balance. Do not use this. Note that you will white balance again during post-processing. If the lighting conditions change, technically, you should also photograph the color checker again. Examples include the sun passing behind clouds, switching to flash, tungsten, or LED lighting, etc. Also note that this applies to full spectrum, like the sun or tungsten filaments, or nearly full spectrum lighting, like LED lights, and not to hue-dominated lighting with one strong color like the color mode on LED lights. We're working in the realm of color temperature, not chroma or RGB. If you do have strong color light sources in your scene, make sure that the color checker target is illuminated by a light using color temperature, i.e. 2800 to 10,000 Kelvin, and does not have any spill on the target from hue-based lights. So in short, make sure your key light is a normal light source. To make a custom camera profile applicable in most situations or situations where lighting conditions are difficult, such as night photography, I photograph the color checker target under two or more white balances. To achieve this, I use a quality LED panel with good spectrum, say 96 CRI or better, to illuminate and photograph the color checker at 3800 Kelvin, 4200 Kelvin, and 5600 Kelvin. I'll provide more on how that can be helpful later. You can photograph the color checker target at your warmest and coolest color temperatures, such as 2800 Kelvin and 6500 Kelvin, importing your images. 
Now, import the images of your color checker targets from your camera into Lightroom Classic. I choose to convert all my Nikon RAW files to DNG upon import into Lightroom. You don't have to convert to DNG on import. It's just what I do. Many photographers photograph their target at the start of a session, and this is handy to have when applying a starting point to all the images from that grouping shot under the same conditions. One more step you may consider is to make a collection with all your color checker images or tag them and place them in a specific folder called color management for easy finding later. Install the software. First, locate, download, and install the color checker camera calibration software from the link in the video description. Make sure Lightroom is closed while installing the software. The installer will add a plugin for Adobe Lightroom Classic and standalone software named Color Checker Camera Calibration. Calibrate and profile your displays. For this process to be most useful, you must use hardware and software to calibrate and profile your displays. For more info on what this is and how to do it, see the description for links. If it's been longer than 30 days since you've last calibrated and profiled your display or displays, do this now, then continue. This is especially vital if you're going to edit your images after creating and applying custom camera profiles. What are custom camera profiles? There are two types of custom camera profiles you can make with camera calibration software for use in Lightroom. The first one is a single illuminant, i.e. a single light source. The second is a dual illuminant, i.e two light sources. The absolute best way to do this is a single illuminant profile for the specific light source you're using. It's color science at its best, and it works. But let's be real. It's not always possible or practical to do this. And sometimes you forget or are just too busy to photograph your color checker target. Don't worry. That's where the second option can not only help you when you don't have a color checker shot from your session, but is also much better than not making a custom camera profile at all. In short, you can create a dual illuminant profile with two different light sources that will improve your results in the situations you encounter most often. Remember when I suggested when you photograph your color checker target under two different white balances? Yeah? You can use those two images to make a dual illuminant profile which provides excellent results with a wide variety of light sources. I shoot under starlight, moonlight, and mixed lighting conditions in suburban and urban areas. Dual illuminant profiles have provided me with better color and contrast than the canned profiles that come with Lightroom. Here's a tip. Both images for a dual illuminant profile must be taken with the same camera. For best results, use the same lens and ISO settings for both shots. Creating single illuminant custom camera profiles. Let's first look at how to make a single illuminant custom camera profile. To start, select one image where you know the color temperature of the light source and the camera matched during capture. In your library view of Lightroom Classic, some call it grid view, select one of the color checker images. In this case, I used 3850 Kelvin. The color checker was lit evenly by an LED color source with a good spectrum and the camera's color temperature set to match the LED. In grid view, click export in the lower left hand corner of your screen. Or another way to do it is in the develop module, click file, export with preset, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command or control plus shift and E at the same time. In the pop-up dialog box, expand the X-Rite presets and then single click on color checker camera calibration. In the box next to DNG profile name, click in and type your profile name. I like to use this naming structure, but you can use anything that works for you. My structure is camera manufacturer, camera model, illuminant in Kelvin, or lens filter. Now leave that last one blank for now and I'll explain later. So for this example, I'm entering Nikon Z8 3850 no filter. Then click export below. 
When the process is complete, you'll be prompted to quit Lightroom and restart it. Do this now. Lightroom cannot see a profile until it's restarted. If you have an image that will not export, try the standalone software. You can create DNG camera profiles using the Color Checker Passport and its Color Checker Camera Calibration software. You must first convert your proprietary RAW file to DNG for this software to work. These DNG camera profiles will save to the folder in Adobe Camera Raw. There's no ACR plugin. There's only a plugin for Adobe Lightroom Classic. Creating dual illuminant custom camera profiles. In your library or grid view of Lightroom Classic, select two color checker images by shift clicking if they're next to each other or command control clicking if they are apart from each other in the grid. One should be your low color temperature extreme and the other your high color temperature extreme. In my example here, I use 3850 Kelvin and 6500 Kelvin. Both were lit evenly by an LED color source with good spectrum and the camera's color temperature set to match the LED. Click Export. In the pop-up dialog box, expand to the x right presets and then single click on Color Checker Camera Calibration. In the box next to DNG Profile Name, click in and type your profile name. I like to use this naming structure, but you can use anything that works for you. Camera Manufacturer, Camera Model, Illuminant and Kelvin, Lens Filter. So for this example, I'm entering Nikon Z8 3850-6500, no filter. Then click Export below. When complete, you'll be prompted to quit Lightroom and restart it. Do this now. Here's a tip. The color temperature you choose on your camera might look different when you import the image into Lightroom. This is normal because your camera records white balance as a set of coordinates in a color space and it may not match Adobe's use of the same system. Consistently setting it on your camera is an important habit, so don't let this difference alarm you. Applying Custom Camera Profiles In Lightroom Classic, select your color checker image and go to the Develop module. Open the Basic panel. Click on the name to the right of Profile and go to the bottom of the list and choose Browse. Open the triangle, some people call it a carrot, next to Profiles and locate the new camera profile you just created. Hover over it and move your cursor and click on the outline of a star. This will add it to your favorites and you won't have to go to Browse for it in the future. Click Close under Profile Browser. Now, when you click on the drop down to the right of Profile, you'll see your new profile listed here for fast access. Choose it now. To see the difference between the standard profile and the new one, tap the backslash on your keyboard. Tap again to see it applied. You may notice subtle or big shifts on the color patches. And do it a couple times so you can start to observe this. That's it for applying a custom camera profile. But I suggest doing one more step to ensure the most neutral color. White balancing. Click on the eyedropper icon under Profile. Hover over the second white square, or really it's just the first gray square. Click once. Put the eyedropper back. Now you're ready to rock and roll and make some amazing edits, knowing your starting point is accurate and neutral. But what if you want to do this even faster next time? Creating and using presets. Once you've chosen your camera profile and made a white balance from the color checker, look in your left hand tools in the develop module of Lightroom Classic. Click the caret if it's collapsed or press tab on your keyboard to reveal it. Expand presets by clicking on the caret. Click on the plus sign to the right of the word presets. Now choose create preset. In the pop-up dialog box, type in a name you'll remember. I suggest using a consistent naming convention. I'll use something similar to what I use for custom camera profiles, 
with the addition of plus WB at the end, which is an abbreviation for plus white balance. So this preset gets named Nikon Z8 3850K plus WB. Below this, you can choose where it will live. The default is user presets. If you want to create your own group, feel free. I made one called color management, so I will choose it now. Next, go to the bottom of the dialog box and click check none. Now click on only treatment and profile and then white balance. Click create. How do I use this? You're going to love this. The first way I use a preset is when I import images. You can select a preset during import and it will be applied to all of your images from that import. How handy, right? But if you shoot under different lighting conditions, this may be confusing. So sometimes I skip applying the profile and white balance preset and I apply it to individual photos from within the develop module. Simply hover over the right one and click to apply. Voila! Get to work editing your awesome work. You can also make presets without a white balance if you only want to apply a custom camera profile. I keep these around just in case because they come in handy for me. The simplest way. If making individual custom camera profiles seems like a little too much for you right now, don't worry. Just make one dual illuminant custom camera profile for the range of light sources you use and apply it to all your images. Once in a while, refresh it because everything ages and degrades, cameras and displays included. To really nail the white balance, you can photograph your color checker under each typical light source you use. Neutralize that, then copy and paste this white balance to any photograph for a neutral starting place. After applying this method for my night photography for a few years, I'm really pleased to say I believe my color got much better. But it's also more consistent, and this has affected my final edits positively. My confidence that it's right from the start made my editing choices even more confident. And I have to stress that even though I'm a night photographer and use my camera in extreme lighting circumstances, this can work for everyone. Making a dual luminant profile that ranges from 2800K to 6500K could be a huge improvement for most photographers, or even 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. Most importantly, just grab yourself a color checker and try it out. I'm confident the results will delight you. I hope this helps you color curious folks out there. If you have questions, please ask in the comments. If you want to learn more about Calibrite, check out the other videos on this channel and Calibrite.com. If you'd like to learn more about me, check out MattHillart.com. I teach night photography workshops with my partners at NationalParksAtNight.com and we host the virtual NightPhotoSummit.com every winter, an in-person Nightscaper photo conference. Big thanks to Calibrite for the opportunity to share this with you and for making tools that improve my photography workflow every day. Seize the night, have fun out there, see you in the comments.